Hey everybody, how's it going? Welcome to the final edition of No dq and a video until WWE SummerSlam, which is this coming Sunday. So much going on in the world of wrestling right now. Make sure you stay tuned to NoDQ.com for the very latest news and rumors regarding SummerSlam, as well as the recent suspensions. Lots of video content up on the channel. Make sure you're up to date with everything. The NXT predictions video, SummerSlam predictions video, Jeff Meacham's After the Bell and a Talk Wrestling video is coming up as well, plus my video, Noah's video, lots of content, and we'll also have review videos of NXT TakeOver and SummerSlam coming up this weekend. So, no sleep till Brooklyn, or no sleep until after Brooklyn with the way things are going. Anyways, got your questions now, so let's get started today with the first one, which comes from Hallowed Halls. Do you think the Eva Marie suspension is a work to get more heat and continue her excuses for not wrestling? Could be genius. Absolutely not. It is definitely not a work. I want to make that clear to everyone. WWE would not work a suspension. WWE takes the wellness policy very seriously. They suspended one of their top guys, Roman Reigns. They're not about to take characters off television, whether it's part of a storyline or not. There's always a possibility WWE will turn this into a storyline where Eva Marie comes back after her suspension and they say, oh, she was out due to the suspension and that was yet another excuse. But the actual suspension itself, 100% not a work. So just wanted to make that clear out there. Somebody asks me if it's a work. It's not a work. They're never worked. When these guys or gals get suspended, it's because they violated the wellness policy. Bottom line. Moving on here, got this one from Cheyenne. Alberto Del Rio has an out clause in his contract for September. So do you think he will, re he will return after his suspension? In my opinion, if I had to make a prediction, my gut feeling is that he's going to be done with WWE. I feel like the writing was already on the wall prior to the suspension and this is just yet another thing to further isolate WWE and Del Rio. I feel like his career is going nowhere. It's going to be hard for him to make even close to what he's been making in WWE on the indies and in Lucha Underground and TNA or whatever, but I feel like there's just nothing else for him to do in WWE and it seems like he is on the outs with the company. It's one thing after another with him and he hasn't really been portrayed as a top character in the company. He's just been there. He's just been a body basically. He hasn't really done anything significant over the past year really. He started off hot when he beat John Cena at Hell in the Cell but then he got teamed up with Zeb Coulter and it was downhill very quickly after that. So there's a possibility him and WWE could work things out, but from what I've seen over the years, it's not looking good. The, the future for Del Rio doesn't appear to be with WWE long term. Got this one here from Nikki Sturzu. Hey Aaron, do you think that a defeat at SummerSlam will decrease Enzo and Cass's momentum? Do you still see them as future tag team champions? Thanks. I could see it hurting them a little bit. I, I think it's unnecessary for them to lose. I definitely feel they should win at SummerSlam. And yes, I do see them being tag team champions. I, I mentioned this during the prediction video with Jeff Meacham. I think that Enzo and Cass could be the next challengers. You could have... You could have New Day lose the tag team titles to the club, Anderson and Gallows, and then have Enzo and Cass chase Anderson and Gallows for the tag team titles. That's a program I could definitely see happening over the next several months in WWE. So yeah, I would definitely have Enzo and Cass win. It will not destroy them to have them lose at SummerSlam, but I, I think it's better to keep building them up, especially if they're going to be facing Anderson and Gallows for the tag team title soon, which I would definitely go in that direction. This one comes from Keith. Your thoughts on a possible Enzo and Cass split, Cass to beat Strowman's Raw Street, then huge push for Cass. Well, I like the idea of Cass beating Strowman. I'm not really thrilled with the idea of seeing that match though, but 
on paper that sounds like a logical way to elevate CAS, but it's too soon for an end zone CAS split. You know, I get this question every so often. I feel they should have a nice solid run with the tag team titles before they split up. Going back to that previous question. I think Enzo and Cash should chase Anderson and Gallows for a while, win the titles, have a good run. Sometime in 2016, that's when you split them up, but definitely not now. And uh, who knows where Strowman will be a year from now. I would be surprised if he's still being pushed like a monster by the time Enzo and Cash actually do split up, but who knows. Got this one from Bear the Gambit. Is American Alpha the presumed SmackDown Tag Team Champions when they're introduced because of a lack of tag team talent? Yeah, I think it only makes sense for American Alpha to be the first SmackDown Tag Team Champions. There's no other real options. I would like to see a strong heel tag team be built up, but who do you have, really? Bree Zango? Not sure they would be worthy of being the first SmackDown Tag Team Champion. So I would just go with American Alpha and focus on building up a top heel tag team. Hopefully WWE can come up with one. I'm not sold on Breeze Zango for Breeze, whatever they're called, or the Ascension. Um, the, the tag division's really lacking right now. I mean, there's no question about it. But yeah, because of that, I would definitely put the titles on American Alpha, have them run through the SmackDown teams, and then start working on building up a new team to challenge them. Got this one here from DJ Witty. Hey Aaron, please answer in video. Is it me or is the New Day's act starting to become a little stale? Can they stay fresh enough till November? This is why we cannot have nice things, to quote Biggie. But just kidding there. I think they are getting a bit stale. I feel like it's time to at least have them lose the tag team titles. You know, people are saying I'm flip-flopping on my opinion about New Day. A couple weeks ago, I said they should just stay champions until November. But the last few weeks, New Day really hasn't done much. And with each passing week, I feel, I feel like it's just the time for them to drop the titles. And um, there's really no need for them to beat Demolition's record. I mean, WWE hasn't really mentioned Demolition besides that one time. And I feel like it's time to go in a new direction with the tag team titles. Time to freshen it up. Put the titles on Anderson and Gallows and start building up towards Anderson and Gallows against Enzo and Cass, as I mentioned earlier. So I just, I just feel with the way everything's playing out, especially in the last couple weeks, it's time for New Day to drop the titles. This one comes from Justin Hurst. Do you see Big E appearing at SummerSlam and costing Kingston and Woods the tag team titles? I could see that happening, not on purpose. I, I do feel it's too soon to break up the New Day. I would not just have them lose the titles and then immediately break up. I'd rather they lose the titles, try to win back the titles, and then slowly build up towards a breakup. So you could have Big E show up and inadvertently cost New Day the tag team titles. I think that that would be a very solid storyline and you could slowly tease the breakup of the New Day and maybe by the end of the year break them up. I mean, I'd love to see the New Day in a triple threat at next year's WrestleMania. I think that, that would be a great match for them. Um, the New Day explodes just like the Mega, po Mega Powers exploded at WrestleMania 33. So I, I would move in that direction. I, I would slowly build up the New Day's breakup and it starts with them losing the titles due to miscommunication. This one comes from Marcus S. Do you think that the club has lost any prestige that they came into the WWE with from New Japan due to the booking? Yeah, I mean, when they first debuted, WWE could have done this NWO style storyline with these outsiders coming in and just dominating the place. Instead, the club lost a tag match a couple weeks in and they're just guys on the roster now. So they, they've already lost that novelty of being outsiders and being something special. And at this point, WWE is just trying to give them character development and, and do this whole doctor gimmick with them and the skits and all that, you know, to make them more like sports entertainers and less like wrestlers. I know some people don't like that. I, I, I do like it. I do feel it adds some depth to their characters. And um, 
I would like to see them more dominating, though, and hopefully they win the tag team titles and get that run and allow them to not only do the comedy, but also be able to back it up in the ring. You know, Kurt Angle did all that comedy back in 2001, 2002, but when he got in the ring, he was still Kurt Angle, and he still feared the guy. He could kick anybody's ass, and uh, that's how it should be with the club. Got this one from Delts Boulder Fist. When Jared KO breaks up, do you think that they will have a feud with each other, leading to a subsequent babyface turn for Kevin Owens? That that would be a very logical way to turn Kevin Owens babyface. I really feel Owens should turn face. The problem is that there's just a lack of top heels, not just on SmackDown, but Raw and the, the entire company in general. The problem is Kevin Owens gets a babyface reaction. Every time his music hits, the crowd pops for him. And... Uh, I'd love to see Kevin Owens as a babyface and maybe him and Sami Zayn work out their problems and become a babyface tag team. That would be awesome. You know, I, I definitely feel that would be a, a good way to turn Owens, have Jericho and Owens have their split. Jericho stays heel. Owens beats Jericho and then Jericho goes off to do his work with Fozzie. And, and, and it's believed that Jericho will be leaving pretty soon to resume his his appearances and, and his work with Fozzie. So, yeah, that, that seems to be a logical storyline heading into the fall and, and possibly a way to establish Owens as a babyface. And I got this one, another one here from Hollowed Halls. Do you think that WWE have handled Finn Balor well so far or have you been disappointed? I think they've done a great job with him. I mean, I, I, I find it silly that anybody out there would feel he's being handled poorly. I mean, he came in his first night on Raw, won a fatal four-way match, and then beat Roman Reigns to get the main event spot at SummerSlam, and he's in a title match for the brand new Universal title at SummerSlam. It doesn't get any bigger than that for Finn Balor. I, I think they're doing awesome with him. Like I said for months, he is a guy that can be very marketable for WWE with the whole demon character. The entrance is just completely unique. And he, he's a superstar. He is truly a guy that can be one of the top faces of the company for many years to come. He has the in-ring abilities. He has the look. He is just a, a, a guy that can make the company a ton of money and have some killer matches over the years. So, yes. I, I think they're doing a tremendous job with him, and if he wins the title, I mean, it, it's funny because if he loses, people are going to say, oh, he's getting buried, but then if he wins, people are going to say, well, he's getting pushed too quickly, and he's being shoved down everyone's throats, and, you know, we, we might get the backlash. I doubt it, though. I doubt we'll get any kind of backlash with him, but it's funny how fans are, you know, if he won, they'd say maybe the company's pushing him too fast, like WCW pushed Goldberg too fast, and that sort of thing, and, uh, you know... I, I could see people being unhappy one way or another, but I, I, I would I would love to see him win the title at SummerSlam. I, I think that that would be awesome. It's something we rarely see where a guy comes in and becomes champion right away. And uh, I, I would be surprised if there was any sort of significant backlash for him being pushed too strong too quickly. This one comes from Jinji. Is it just me or is SmackDown too face heavy? How long... How do you see WWE solving this, especially for challengers for Ambrose? Like I've said before, I, I think AJ Styles is the next contender to go against Dean Ambrose. At least that's the direction I would go in and build up AJ and have him be the guy to win the title from Ambrose. But yeah, that is a problem. And like I said earlier, it's a problem with WWE in general. There aren't a lot of strong heels in the company. And your top heels, guys like AJ Styles and Seth Rollins and Kevin Owens, the fans love these guys. I mean, AJ gets a big pop. Like I said, Kevin Owens gets a pop every time his music hits. Seth Rollins, you know, he, he's coming out of the arena. There, there was this video of him in um, Australia, and he's coming out of this, this arena, and uh, there's all these fans in the parking lot. It's like a you know, like a 10-story parking lot, and there's fans everywhere, and it's this awesome scene, like Rollins is just overwhelmed by emotion, and he takes out his camera, and he's shooting video. Uh, you know, how, how can you hate this guy? That's the problem. There aren't really any heels that you just despise and are good storyline heels. 
Um, you, you really don't have that. Um, so that that's definitely a major issue in WWE. How do you fix it? You have these heels going out there and they stay in character. They go out there, they act like heels, they do not break character on television or when the cameras are turned off in the arena. They do not break character on Twitter. You know, I, I, I think that's an issue too with the social media. Maybe guys should have two accounts, one account for their TV character and another account as a personal account. You know, there are things WWE can do um, to have stronger heels in the company. Got this one here from Carl. I like that avatar. Hey, Aaron, which brand do you think Harper will be once he comes back? Also, do you think he should be pushed? I think he'll end up on SmackDown just so he can be there with Bray Wyatt, but who knows what's going on with the Wyatt family. You never know because WWE teased it on SmackDown. For all we know, creative might not know what to do with Bray Wyatt and Rowan, and a week from now, that whole tease of a split might be ignored and Bray Wyatt and Eric Rowan are back to being a team and WWE might not know what to do with these guys so when Harper returns they're like alright let's just reunite them as the Wyatt family and, and keep that keep that team together for a while you know and it'll just be a repeating cycle where they they want to break up the guys but then they go back on it and plans change and the Wyatt family just keeps on going um, I'd love to see Harper come back and feud with Bray Wyatt. I mean, that would be awesome. You know, Bray Wyatt could try to um, get Luke Harper back under his wing and Harper is no, no longer allowing himself to be brainwashed and, you know, that, that could lead up to a storyline. I mean, there's lots of interesting things WWE could do with those guys. Um, but, you know, wouldn't surprise me if Harper just comes back and is part of the Wyatt family. It's, it's just the same thing that we've seen and uh, nothing really changes. This one comes from at Vince Fears No DQ, best username ever. And by the way, I, I'm not biased when it comes to usernames. Some people say, will you answer questions from people that have no DQ in their username? That's not the case. I am about as random as possible, and I try to answer as many different questions from different people as possible. Uh, so I apologize if I haven't gotten to your question yet. Keep sending them in. Try to come up with a unique question. Anyways, the question here. Was Heath Slater the most entertaining thing about the Raw SummerSlam Go Home show? He was certainly one of the most entertaining parts of Raw. I, I loved that segment with Heath Slater and Brock Lesnar. I think Slater's doing a tremendous job, and I like the fact that he has a storyline. I like the fact that he's going from show to show. He's trying to get his job back, um, even though he's appearing on both shows. So if anything, he, he's got a better spot than anybody because he's appearing on both shows. Um, Heath Slater's doing some of the best promo work of his career, and Brock was great. So yeah, I'm really enjoying what Heath Slater is doing right now, and he's really shining. He's shining brighter than he's ever shined in his entire career, quite frankly. That'll do it for this edition of No DQ and a video. Thanks as always for watching. Again, stay tuned to the YouTube channel. Lots of video content between myself, Jeff Meacham, Noah Donish, pay-per-view predictions from NXT and SummerSlam. We'll have our review videos for both of those shows coming up this weekend. And of course, NoDQ.com will keep you updated on the suspensions, SummerSlam, NXT, and all that good stuff. NoDQ.com, the place for all that. And I will see you guys next time.